In order to give your brakes an overhaul, it's helpful to have some tips. Here are some that I've found useful. Firstly, turn your wheels so that it's easier to get to the braking system, as you can see here. Make sure you put blocks behind the wheels that you aren't lifting, in order to prevent your car moving when you start jacking it up. Loosen the wheel nuts slightly prior to jacking the car. Next, jack the car up so that you can remove the wheel. My drive isn't a very good surface, so I've used a piece of plyboard to help provide a more even surface. Once the wheel is lifted, clear off the ground, undo the nuts the rest of the way and remove the wheel. Place it under the sill as an extra precaution should the jack fail. Once the wheel is removed, place axle stands under parts of your car that will support its weight. Very often there will be one under the engine, the rear tow hook and major suspension components. Check your owner's manual to see where the jacking points are on your particular model. I also use wooden blocks as an extra precaution. These are 6x2 C24 grade construction timber and are offcuts from loft joists. Also, please wear appropriate footwear. I'm wearing steel toe cap boots, although I have seen other YouTubers wearing flip flops doing these sorts of jobs. A misplaced brake disc is going to make a right mess of somebody's toes. Here I've used axle stands under suspension components and once in place drop the jack slightly so that the weight of that corner of the car is supported by these supports and not the jack, although I leave the jack in place just in case my supports fail. At this point it might help to give your caliper bolts a quick spray with WD-40 or another product designed to penetrate into the thread. Undo the top bolts which hold the caliper in place, these can be a bit stiff but because we've turned the wheel, we can get a breaker bar in for more torque. On the rear brakes, there's also a plastic cover to remove, which has two bolts. Remove the caliper and place it so that it's not hanging from the brake pipe. I've used some wooden blocks, but you could also tie wrap it to the suspension system. Remove the caliper carrier after loosening the bolts and remove the old pads. Depending on your car and pads, you may need to remove the brake pad shims in order to use again as I did. Shims are thin pieces of metal that sit between the caliper and the pad. Once the caliper has been removed, give the screws that hold your brake disc in place a squirt with WD-40 and then try and undo them. These can be difficult to remove due to corrosion. Sometimes they may need drilling out. If so, start with a finer drill bit and gradually increase the size. You can also try a screw extractor. If you're lucky like I was on one of the rear bolts, the head will break off after removal. Or you could try an impact driver like I'm using here. I used all three methods at some point while replacing all my car's discs, pads and caliper pins. There are plenty of YouTube videos out there showing you how to use these different methods. Usually you'll need to give your disc a hit with a hammer to remove them from the hub as they corrode and end up sticking. It might be a good idea at this point to give the hub a bit of a clean. I then use a light coat of copper grease to try and prevent this corrosion in future. Make sure you give your new disc a clean with brake disc cleaner. This is to remove any contaminants or oil residue. I recommend that you buy new brake disc screws and prior to installing put some lubricant on their threads to make them easier to remove in future. I'm using Worth brake paste which withstands temperatures up to 1100 degrees. Oh, and make sure you line the disc holes up properly, which I didn't do here at first. Due to the age of my brake components, I decided to replace my caliper pins as they had corrosion on them and the rubber boots were past their best. I gave the carrier bracket a good clean first. One of the caliper pins was a nightmare to remove and took quite a bit of effort to get it out. I ended up using mole grips, also known as locking pliers, and rotated it back and forth while pulling it out. Hopefully you won't have this problem. Once out you can see the corrosion on it. The new caliper pins are slightly different, one has flat edges on it and the other a rubber grommet on the end. 
The one with the rubber grommet is for the top of the bracket and the one with the flat edges goes to the bottom. Apparently the rubber grommet gives better manoeuvrability when flipping it upwards to just remove the pads and helps prevent rattling noises and the flat edges on the bottom allow for more silicon lubricant to be used. However, if you know any different, please let me know in the comments section below. Make sure you use plenty of silicon lubrication, don't use anything else to lubricate as brake calipers are subject to extremely high temperatures which may cause other lubricants to break down. Insert the rubber boots and then slide in the caliper pins. I struggled with one of them as the rubber boot was a bit tight to slide in the caliper. I ended up using some timber to support the bracket while tapping it gently with a hammer, which did the trick. However, as I was clutching at straws, I didn't film it, but here's roughly what I did. I then added more silicon lubricant to the pins. At this point, I cleaned up the brake pad shims. Once cleaned, I used Honda Molico M77 assembly paste on them. It's not cheap, but it's what the manual says to use. It's also not the easiest thing to get out of the tube. If you have any alternative recommendations, again, please put them in the comments section. After this, place the shims back into the caliper. Use the assembly paste on the back of the pads to prevent squeaking noises. Then put them in place and move on to pushing the caliper piston back inside the caliper as otherwise the extra width of the new pads will prevent you getting the caliper back on the carrier. On the rear calipers you have to screw this back into the caliper. There is a specific tool that you can buy but I just used a heavy duty file to screw it back in. Although be warned space is tight and they can be quite stiff. Before popping the caliper and new pads back in place you need to add more molico to the contact areas on the shims as you can see me do here. Once this is done give them a spray with brake cleaner. I'm using TuneApp 115. This should remove any product that you manage to get on the surface of the pad which could if left on there affect your ability to brake. You can use a rag to remove any excess molico. Then we need to tighten the bolts and torque them to the correct settings which on the caliper carrier are 130 newton meters. Then place the caliper back on the carrier. It took me quite a bit of fiddling around to get mine back on, probably due to everything being brand new and as a result the fitting being quite tight. And take note of the caliper pins as they are designed to fit in a particular position. So rotate them around if need be. Then torque the caliper itself to specification which is 49 newton meters. I use my torque adapter which is a bit large and only just fitted in with the breaker bar and I ended up having to lean against the bumper a little as you can see here. Then give the brake disc another clean with the brake disc cleaner and use copper grease on the area which contacts the wheel. While your wheels are off you might want to lubricate your rubber suspension parts. A silicon lubricant is best bet but WD-40 is better than nothing if you've not got any. Then jack the car up off the supports remove the jack stands and wooden blocks and then place the wheel back on. Tighten up the wheel nuts hand tight, remove your supports and then drop the car slightly so that the tyre contacts the floor. Then torque to 108 newton meters of torque, then lower the car and remove the jack. For comparison this is what the old and new discs look like. Thanks for watching, feel free to like, share, subscribe and watch my other videos.